what's going to happen in your life? Now, Forrest Gump's mum may have told him that life was like a box of chocolates, but is it true that we never know what we're going to get? How much is your path in life already laid out and predetermined, and how much of it is down to you? Now, you might think that science frustratingly avoids the hidden complexities of life. Love, chance, fate, Murphy's Law, flukes and exceptions. They're things which make life really interesting. And it's true that science is all about boiling questions down to things that we can measure. We choose questions with outcomes that we can prove or disprove so that we can rely on that data. But scientists also recognise that this doesn't cover the whole of every issue. Now, science acknowledges that the world is unimaginably complicated, but most evidence supports the idea that at some level, everything comes down to cause and effect, even something that seems random like the rolling of the dice. Because actually, the path that the dice will take and the number it lands on comes down to just the tiny forces that you're exerting with your fingertips as you roll. There's a core idea from classical Newtonian physics called determinism. We understand how everything affects everything else, even if we can't possibly track it all. And on one level, everything does seem predetermined. Who you'll vote for at the next election is affected by what conversations you had in the office, which were affected by what those people had read and where you live, which were in turn were affected by, well, you get the picture. But now imagine that I place a drop of water on the back of my hand and watch which way it rolls. Sure, it's still predetermined by the shape of my hand and of the microscopic interactions with the water, still cause and effect. But exactly where the drop starts is going to have a big impact on where it ends up. Now there are some things in the world, like this drop of water, or revolutions or wars, that are extremely sensitive to initial conditions. If one tiny thing changes, the outcome can be vastly different. This is chaos theory. And chaos means that predicting the future becomes really, really hard. Things are all affecting each other in a web of cause and effect, and it's complicated, infinitely complicated. So complicated, in fact, that events, although apparently predetermined by initial conditions, are impossible to predict. But that doesn't mean that you can't do anything. The movement of air and sea currents is chaotic too, and it's still possible to study the big patterns without modelling each single air droplet or water molecule. So, okay, maybe scientists can't predict what's in store for you, but if every action is part of a complex web of deterministic causes and effects, does this mean everything you do has already been decided? Or can you affect your path yourself? And if we say we can't affect our own future, well, we all just kick back and not do anything. Once scientists discovered how things interact at the really tiny subatomic level, we found out that these really tiny particles that make up atoms behave according to different rules of physics, rules called quantum mechanics. Now, one of the rules of quantum mechanics is that a particle can be in a number of places or any one of them all at once, and we'll not be able to predict or measure which which basically means that there is an element of chance built into the fabric of our universe, which would mean that everything is not dependent on initial conditions and fate does not exist. Well, that's if we understand quantum mechanics correctly. But most of the major events in our universe do not, at the moment at least, seem to occur at the subatomic level. It's kind of irrelevant because the location of these tiny subparticles don't seem to affect the large-scale causes and effect activities in our everyday lives. Or so we thought. Because recent studies say that our brain's neurons may almost uniquely use connections between tiny subatomic quantum effects and larger-scale effects in order to fire signals. So rather than, as previously thought, our thoughts being predetermined with us only having a veto on whether we fire them according to whether something new happens, Actually, there may be an element of chance within our brains. So ultimately, scientists don't know whether fate exists because we don't fully understand whether quantum mechanics works, nor whether it's at work in our brains, which is why maybe, maybe not is still the scientific answer to whether fate exists. But at least now you know one of the reasons why scientists care so much about quantum mechanics and know it's still worth making an effort to shape your own future 
rather than expecting the universe to do it for you. How best to play the game of life? Now, if you believe Game of Thrones, it's best to be selfish, look after yourself, and exploit your enemy when they're at their weakest. 